And we are back at IMTS with Tom and Mark of MMT. Gentlemen, thank you very much for having me into your booth today. As I start every interview, I just want a quick background because it helps people who do find this understand what pathways exist within manufacturing beyond just an operator role, right? So, Tom, let's start with you. So, I'm the technical sales director for the Tridex brand under MMT. Uh, Tridex focuses on microchemical grinding and precision cutoff solutions. Uh, my background, I've been, I've been with Tridex uh, for, and in this industry for about 32 years. Okay. Prior uh, experience was in just general manufacturing, toolmaker background. So we bring a lot of really unique and innovative solutions uh, to manufacturing across uh, medical devices, aerospace engines, particularly semiconductors are probably our kind of biggest, pretty biggest market. Right? Awesome. Awesome. What about you, Mark? Yeah, uh, my name is Mark Scannell. I've been with one of the seed companies for MM for about 17 years now, Libor. Um, had a lot of different roles throughout the organization, to say the least. Uh, I spent a lot of time as a field engineer and, and technician and, and worked into uh, heading those departments and that kind of work to our customers and developing that. Yeah. Uh, so I took care of a lot of the aftermarket, the service, customer service and things like that. Um, worked in the plants, operations manager, GM, all that kind of fun stuff. But uh, now I'm uh, in charge of grinding technology sales part. Okay. So I work with Tom and Mark and the rest of the team on the grinding side of MMT yeah. um, to help apply our technologies to our customers. Awesome. And uh, so tell us a bit about MMT as a whole, guys, because I see a lot of different <laughs> logos yeah. up here, right? Yeah. So talk to us about what MMT is, what you do, and what problems do you solve? Sure. So when MMT was created, the idea is to be able to have a customer come to us and go from start to finish in a whole production line. Sure. Right? So if you take it, if you take a look at, like, for instance, one of the biggest areas of business, catheter medicine, and a lot of our businesses come, from, each one of them brought their own very specific, interesting technology. We keep adding, whether it's in the process, out of the process, before and after. Sure. And so what we're doing is going, hey, we want a customer to come up to us and go like, I got a product I need to make. I want one supplier that I can talk to, I can work with and go, I want to go everything from extrusion all the way to packaging. Yeah. Now we don't have every single one of those things. We're working on developing those technologies, but in catheter or in guide wire, which would be like navigation, the end of things, okay. we have pretty much every piece of the puzzle, whether you're laminating, whether you're bonding, you're balloon blowing, whether you're testing those pieces of equipment, you can pick up the phone and go, we got all these expects and some of the companies are from back in the fifties. Wow. And some of them are newer and more innovative and different, but um, the idea is call us and we'll be able to help you throughout the year. And so one of the areas that I focused on a lot was what we call total, right? And the idea is we don't want to just deliver the machine. We want to deliver the process and we want to deliver the expertise to help you do your job better. Sure. Sometimes you got really great engineering at one point in the development of a product line. Sometimes you don't. So yeah. we want to be able to fill in those gaps. Awesome. Very cool. Tom, anything you want to add? We'd like to, uh, Ideally, in a med device space, we'd like to get in when possible on uh, as early as possible in the design phase. People will come to us and say, hey, we've come up with this new device and you know, can, how manufacturable is it? And then we may come and say, okay, hey, instead of this, maybe you want to add this feature, maybe you want to redesign this so that you, you'll bring the cost down, you can make it you know, sure. a lot easier to manufacture. So we do a lot of that. We're in, in the case of Tridex, uh, we're in electrochemical grinding, which is a very niche business, and uh, we call it non-traditional manufacturing. So people come to us with a lot of really off-the-wall problems that they haven't solved with conventional machining. So we've developed some really unique uh, solutions to those problems. And it's it's, a, it's fun to come, somebody come in with something just can't, they haven't figured out. Yeah. We come up with a solution. So I mean, that's why I stayed at a, at a job like this, right? Right. Everyone's got these okay. very strange things, and we get to go solve the problem. Yeah. Right, we're going to do it. And that's, I think, probably the best. I mean, manufacturing for me is that's where it came from. Yeah. Well, and that's, <laughs> that, that says a lot about the leadership too, right? Because if you stay because of moments like that and things like that, means that leadership's doing a great job on their end as well. It's a series of stories, yeah. right? And accomplishments, sometimes 
not always successful, but in the end, they you get something out of it. But uh, yeah, it's, you know, the amount of different industries, especially in the grinding tech side, we worked in plus consumer goods. I mean, you think about it, we used to joke around and believe that there's something in your house that was made on one of our pieces of golf. We were really big in the golf area. Right. The seven wow. Things like the ends of felt tip more ground. Really? Yeah. And, and they're ground out of a rod. That's super neat. And so like, you would never know that these things existed. Or for me, it was like peeling back the curtain of what everybody uses every day. Yeah. And like, oh, that's how I make them. And this show is one of those ones that really kind of reinvigorate that. That's really cool. Interest. So what are you guys showing in the booth today that's new, novel, exciting, any of the above, or all of the above? So step over to this machine. Yeah. This is a Tridex uh, CS1 the electric element cutoff machine. Okay. It's used primarily for cutting tubing. Uh, we, we cut some bar stock, and this is not obviously all set up sure. for, for use here because we're display, but... Uh, the beauty of this machine is that we can cut tubing, and particularly stainless tubing, things like this, without any burr whatsoever. So if you cut on any other technology, you're going to end up with some sort of a burr or a deburring operation. Can you hold that and, right there? Yep. I want to get the size of that, Tom, because that's tiny. Yeah, let me grab. So this is a, a two millimeter diameter needle, and with a, we cut the tubing the length completely burr free. So this condition here with a slight edge break is right from the machine. How, how are you able to accomplish that without a burr? So the, the technology, which has been around for a long time, is a hybrid process of electrochemical machining and abrasive grinding. So we have just a DC power supply. That's connected to the material yeah. and also connected to a conductive grinding wheel. And in lieu of coolant, we use a, a sodium nitrate salt water solution. So when you have salt water and DC current, you have electrolysis. Right. So we're eroding the material as we're grinding. So it makes it a faster cut. You get much better life out of the, of the grinding wheel and we can eliminate any burrs. So another one of our machines we don't have on display here, but it's used for making uh, all different types of needles, uh, hypodermic needles up to you know, biopsy needles, trocars, orthopedic instruments. And we do this also with the electrochemical process because we could grind a lot of these parts with, you know, very little or no burr. And we can tweak the process to produce very sharp cutting edges. Wow. Uh, this has become a pretty big line of so How many of those can you grind at the same time in the same fixture, like per cycle? So on a needle like this, which is, I think, two millimeter diameter, we could grind about 45 pieces at a time. And cycle time, including loading and unloading uh, manually, is under two minutes. So uh, the next sort of uh, innovation we're going to is some automation so that uh, a robot would be able to load and unload the pieces. That will bring the cycle time down. And we have a new machine that we'll be releasing uh, later this year that has palletized table so an operator or a robot will load the machine while it's grinding and then the entire table index and you'll be essentially grinding non-stop wow. even bigger taking the production wow. our focus is generally the specialty needle market where the volumes are you know maybe in the hundreds of thousands to the millions not not your you know your blood collection needles that are made in the billions so our forte really is very flexible system. We can go for a sample card. This is a trocar, a conventional needle, another smaller needle. We can go from this one to this one in probably under 10 minute change over time. Wow. Another big factor. You can also make needles that are very long. Some of the stuff that's used on the catheter side. Yeah. They're literally needles that are several feet long. Wow. We could do those easily as well. That's great. And then we also apply the technology in aerospace. So this is a piece of uh, honeycomb made of probably a high temperature alloy that's used in an aircraft engine. Uh, and there's lots of applications like that. And wow. I always tell people our market is, our two big markets are medical devices and air, aircraft engines and similarities are in the, the materials that are used, both sure. exotic materials. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, maybe well, the only other new thing that would be important for, I think, your viewers to see is that we make a lot of grinders here in grind. Okay. And uh, one of the things is everybody's most of the time grinding or, or dressing the grinding wheels on the machine, which means okay. you're not producing them. Right. Um, so we produce a dressing machine. Okay. So also part of the Tridex product line, um, but it's actually designed to to work on a very wide range of grinding wheels. For, for instance, we have a center loose grinding. The idea is... It, it, it gives you the, the very quick impression that it's a small baby lathe with a little table. Yeah. But it's purpose-built. 
right? Okay. So we got to deal with the uh, the uh, abrasives that are coming off the wheel. We sure. want to be able to uh, move real aggressively against the wheel. So a lot of um, the machines that use these wheels are counter spindles. But what we did is we added a tail stock so we get a lot more rigidity, so we can push a lot harder on the wheels and get faster and more consistent. Uh, Absolutely. So this is new for us. And is I, can I cover it okay? Yeah, I mean, this just released at the show, but uh, the machine has, in addition to being a very heavy, robust uh, machine, it's got a servo driven. This is a diamond roll driven by a servo motor, so we have lots of torque to be able to dig in and grind or dress very tough wheels. That's This is a, an example of a wheel for grinding, probably for grinding balls for a roll-on deodorant. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of forming. It takes to take a new wheel and have to form that. It takes a while. But if you do it offline, you keep your machine grinding and not spending time dressing. I love it. That's yeah. awesome. So that's, that's really cool. We're pretty excited for it because it, it's not just for our equipment. Yeah. So it's we're, we're and so far, we've had some pretty good reaction in the markets. We're super excited awesome. about that as well. We, Guys, we can grind, uh, as it sits, we can grind wheels up to 12 inch diameter and 10 inches wide. That's massive. Yeah. So it was pretty. It's got a lot of interest from some of the wheel manufacturers that are here. That kills a lot of shops that have a lot of grinders. So is that, like, I, I know a couple of centerless shops, right? Yeah. Would they be chomping at the bit for this? The, it's funny you say that. The, it depends on the size of centerless, right? Okay. Right now, the one that we started out with, because it's more uh, in our ballpark, is that, that 12 inch diameter and less. Yeah. If you're talking big centerless, you're talking 22, 24 inches. Right. We can do the reg the regulating wheels or control wheels depending okay. on what country you're in. Yeah. Right? We're we're developing maybe something a little bit bigger for our friends in the more to come. Maybe IMTS twenty twenty six. We can expect to see something pretty cool from MMT. Hey, they say if you build it, they'll come, right? And they will. I promise. <laughs> Tom, you're talking with you, Likewise. Mark. Yeah, thank you very you. much. Appreciate you guys.